And as you do, turn to someone and say, Merry Christmas. It's a season of great joy. It's a season of great celebration. It's a moment when we acknowledge that this wonderful moment of the light of God is alive, born anew within our lives. Years ago, I had the opportunity of going to visit the actual nativity site, so they said. Traveling to Israel, having this beautiful moment of coming to the place of the nativity with great expectation, thinking I'm going to see this wonderful little stable. Possibly there will be some animals still there. Uh, maybe it's this wonderful little stable. There's a simple manger. Uh, it would look just like the crash I had at home in childhood. I was anticipating there might be shepherds nearby. What would it look like, a place where there is just such simplicity, only to arrive at a place that would now was so ornate? Where the Byzantines had turned it into a shrine, it was now filled with gold and marble. It had nothing to look like at all that what we imagined to be that simple place, that simple uh, stable, that simple inn, that place where. There was no room was now filled. No room because there were so many tourists. No room because there were so many people in line to come and touch the gold, to touch the marble, to touch the place that now symbolized the birth of Jesus. That first Christmas was so different than that. It was so simple. That first Christmas was that, in simplicity, just, shall we say, normal everyday activities taking place. A simple Jewish family traveling in the census for the purpose of the taxations to move to this place, coming in a journey along with it, a pregnant woman. So simple that when they arrived, you would think it was nothing alarming or new, but only to find there was, because of all the busy tourism of the day, there was no room in the inn and no place for them. A simple stable, a humble beginning so different than what we saw in Jerusalem or in, uh, in Bethlehem, that what we saw in Israel. It just seems so uh, cold and austere from that simplicity that we think of in the beautiful Christmas morn. The writers of the New Testament, I believe, were trying to say something deeper and deeper as they told the story. I think there was something in this simplicity of the story that has a deeper meaning for each and every one of us because every time we read the Christmas story, too often we are reading what we think is history. We think we're reading about something that happened 2,000 years ago. And so what happens then, it becomes a little bit removed from us. And we wonder, how do we relate to this story of 1,000 years ago? How does it have meaning for us? Well, we discover that true biblical interpretation engages in a, in a way that says, this is our story. This is your story. The writers wanting to convey something deeper wrote with such beautiful metaphor to explain a spiritual act within our hearts and our lives. A birth, a birth of Christ within us. Christ being that wonderful awareness, that wonderful consciousness. Christ not a person, but that being of awareness within us that invites us to a new understanding, an enlightenment, a wonderful journey that takes us to someplace new and different within our spiritual lives. The deeper meaning is there for us to experience within our life as we look and we place ourselves in the story itself. You and I, there in a manger. You and I, there in a stable. You and I, there as Mary and Joseph. You and I having the opportunity to experience a beautiful birth, a birth of something new and fresh within our lives a birth of a Christ awareness within us. Christ awareness may sound very strange to some of us as we think about, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Awareness, that word consciousness, awareness, enlightenment, that which we become aware of is what we're speaking of. That that's what was birthed in our world today. Where the beautiful passage of scripture shares with us, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Inviting us, you have the same awareness, same consciousness, same enlightenment that Jesus had. For this is the birth. This is what we celebrate. We celebrate that this is a moment for us to awaken to our highest and best. This is a moment for as the 
Jesus came into this world as our master way shower and teacher, teaching, showing, and revealing for us of the way of enlightenment, the way of understanding, the way of a consciousness that is higher for our lives. So it is this invitation, let this mind be in you. Let this Christ mind be in you. Let this awareness be in you. Let it be birthed in you. Let it be that so that you are then awakened to the highest and best of your journey of your life. And that same process of Jesus awakening is available to us each and every day of our life. So in this season, we awaken to the light that comes into our lives that dispels all kinds of darkness within us. We awaken to new truth. We awaken to new understanding. And as it does, it just removes the shadows of our life, those questions and wonderings, those places of darkness and doubt, stress and fear. They dissipate. They go away as we awake, awaken to this new understanding that the very mind of Christ is ours. The very mind that was in Jesus is ours. So often, so often we're caught up in thinking that it's all about worshiping Jesus. But the following of Jesus was saying that this same uh, teaching that I'm offering you is for you to implement, for you to engage in, for you to use in your day-to-day -day life. So often we miss the point that we're so caught up in following Jesus and we think it's just to worship and not to live out the awareness very consciousness, very teachings within his life. That we might also live from love, grace, mercy, and peace each and every day of our life is the calling of Christmas. And we might awaken to this and it birth within us. That we then become the Christ for this moment, the Christ for this now, or then it becomes a living story, not just a story of history, but our story as we birth this within our lives during this season that is so symbolic of the darkness and the stillness and the quiet, a precursor or a prelude to the new spring, to the new season. We find it within us that it's not strange that Christmas be celebrated during the winter solstice. For we find so much commonality during this in so many faith traditions. We find that the early... Uh, Believers followed the solstice and celebrated this changing of the sun and the movement of the planet in such a way that new light was coming and spring to be found it was a very powerful message of hope. Christianity celebrated then this birth at the same that it might be we too are finding this new light and this new sense of hope. Hanukkah celebrated during this time. And Hanukkah, that wonderful sense of the light bringing hope to the lives of those as the candle was lit and the oil was just enough for the eight-day period, for the menor menorah to be lit each and every day. We find these wonderful messages that we all have in common, that we celebrate together, messages of light and its power in our life, overcome darkness, to flood our life with hope, to flood our life with fulfillment of all this peace to understand this the mind of christ to understand this the enlightenment for our journey in our lives so too tonight we celebrate then with great joy that which happens within our lives each christmas a new and fresh outlook as we travel these seasons our spiritual journey is then unfolding in new ways as never before we're saying i open my life let it be that I am birthing today the beauty, the love, the grace, the passion, the compassion of Jesus that he saw, taught so beautifully. Let us then be the light for the world. For he said, I am the light and you are the light. We are the light. We proclaim this together. And that's why we see this beautiful illumination that transforms and changes our world around us. The Christmas is this moment of asking, what will you birth? What will you bring forth? As it's on the cusp of a new year, we celebrate Christmas just, just a few days before we enter into the new 2020. What will you birth? What will you bring forth in your own spiritual life? What will you be bringing forth that will be a transformational light into the world around you? How will you live the very life of Jesus in this moment, in this now, in this current day 
How will you live out and demonstrate all the love and grace and mercy that he taught so beautifully? How will you do as he challenged us to follow him and to keep his teachings? To follow him and to keep his teachings, meaning to live them out and to birth them anew. Tonight we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate the birth of that which is ever unfolding within us. The light, the love, the passion, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness to be lived out each and every day of our lives. We say Merry Christmas. Amen.